Hello there and welcome to the new Manitowoc Ice Monthly Spotlight. We're doing things a little bit differently now. Uh, we're going to do a monthly spotlight that will be posted to our website and straight to our YouTube channel instead of the previous version of a webcast where we'd have live attendees. Uh, still going to be about a half hour long, still going to be much more in-depth information on a topic uh, like we did with our webcast, so that'll contrast it to our uh, to our ice tech facts series, which are kind of quick and to the point. So today we're going to talk about modular Manitowoc ice and cool air uh, model ice machines that are not harvesting. So we're not going to talk about the undercounter series today. We're just going to be talking about modular units, so machines that sit on bins or on dispensers. Uh, just like on our uh, on our webcast series, we're still going to have that quiz. It's still going to be mobile friendly. We're still going to need the information about uh, your email, how to contact you, and we're still going to do the same things with the prizes that we did before. Send out certificates and a PDF version of the presentation. Uh, again, you're going to have to be able to hit submit, give us your email. Otherwise, I don't know who I'm reaching out to and we won't have a way to track you down. All right, but let's get into what we're talking about today. A modular ice machine that is not harvesting. Manitowoc Ice and the Cool Air brand. We'll be talking about them both. Troubleshoot them a lot of the same ways. We'll show you a little bit about the technology of Indigo Next and how that can help you and what you'd have to look for on Cool Air that doesn't have a user interface display. But what are we looking for with long harvest? In harvest, we're looking for the board to see the curtain switch. Uh, we're trying to see that the curtain switch has been activated. And by that, I mean that it starts closed. You'll see there on the screen, it says harvest has been going on for a minute and 24 uh, seconds. Curtain switch one is closed. Curtain switch two is not applicable because it's going to be a single evaporator system. Then what's going to happen is it's going to go to open. That tells me that the ice is coming off goes back to close and we go back into a pre-chill. That's normally what happens. Well, what, what we're gonna see instead though, I'm gonna highlight here that Indigo Next uh, and the previous Indigo series with version 5.010 uh, software and on, uh, and the cool air units with uh, software version 3.2 and on, they have a maximum seven minute harvest. All previous versions of software, so for the Indigo 5.009 in uh, previous or Cool Air 3.1 in previous had a three and a half minute maximum harvest. So you'll see on there the screen has changed. We're at six minutes and 59 seconds. You got one second to drop that ice. And if you don't, you're going to go into a thaw sequence, which we'll highlight on another day. Um, and if you do that three times in a row on that Indigo next, you're going to go to an off state because you'll have shut off on long harvest. So we're going to talk about symptom number three. Uh, we have two harvest symptoms, symptom three and symptom four. This one's going to be symptom three. The ice machine's not harvesting. Your free cycle is normal. That's key. If your free cycle is not normal, stop what you're doing and get that right. Uh, and the cubes are melted, at, uh, not melted after harvest, sorry. That's telling me that no heat went to that evaporator and uh, we're not melting the ice. Near the uh, end of the seven uh, minute harvest cycle, if the sheets have not dropped and we do that enough times, we're gonna end up with that safety limit too. Here you're seeing somebody who pulled ice off and there's no melt out. Symptom four, ice machine will not harvest. The freeze cycle is normal. Again, just like with symptom three, the freeze cycle has to be normal. Uh, but the ice uh, cubes are melted after harvest. Near the end of a seven minute harvest, you probably have melted it out and you might not have dropped that sheet. Uh, we'll get a little bit into some further uh, some further scenarios for each one of these uh, further on. But the key difference, symptom three, no melt out. Symptom four, you're melting out. Keep in mind, symptom four is not gonna be refrigeration. You had enough heat to melt that ice. You have enough heat going to the evaporator. It means that the hot gas valve is doing its job and it means that the compressor and the refrigerant uh, is right. So let's not go into refrigeration on symptom four. You're looking at other things. But symptom three, again, freeze is normal and ice cubes are not melted after the harvest sequence. Here, I'm gonna show you a few of the charts. We're not gonna just go through the chart. I've got better uh, things to show you than these charts, but they're, they're there for you. It's a pick your own adventure, answer the question, and it'll get you to that answer. The thing I do wanna highlight there is at the top, it asks you, is the discharge uh, line temperature normal at the end of a freeze? All Indigo and Indigo Next, all cool air model ice machines, you must be greater than 150 PSI on your discharge line. If you're not getting there, you're on the wrong chart. You need to fix your freeze like we talked about a second ago. 
here we're showing you on the traditional remote. Uh, it's giving you a different path there. There are other things to focus on, like your uh, your headmaster on the condenser and uh, how to troubleshoot the harvest pressure regulating system. That first chart was just for air and water cooled. There's going to be another chart coming out uh, that you'll be seeing in your tech handbook. But uh, we're not covering that series today. Uh, then there's the big one here. Uh, again, these are all in your tech handbooks. They also uh, wind up in the flash drives uh, given to you at any uh, level two field training, as well as the level three factory school here in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. It's just showing you that there's different paths you have to take depending on your condensing option. Again, we're not just doing our flow charts today. All right, again, regardless of the series of modular Manitowoc ice machine or cool air ice machine, you got to get above 150 degrees on your compressor discharge line. On this machine, uh, we're highlighting a self-contained unit uh, where the compressor is inside. So T2, that's measuring your compressor discharge line. Hey, we're almost at 10 minutes in the freeze cycle. We got 163 degrees. So assuming that we're making a full sheet of ice, we've satisfied that first requirement of those charts. On the cool air, you're going to actually need something that can measure uh, temperature on a rounded uh, copper line. So you're going to want to come six inches off that compressor and take a temperature reading. Again, cool air doesn't have the display. It's not going to have thermistor temperatures to tell you things. So you're going to have to go and actually get that information yourself. Again, I'm going to stress some of the same things over and over when I talk to you guys. Uh, if you're not above 150 degrees, resolve the freeze si uh, situation. A lot of long harvests are sh uh, caused by the fact that the machine doesn't have enough ice on the plate, which will lead to a symptom four. All right, the harvest valve. Uh, we're wondering, hey, is that valve energized? There's two ways to check. First thing you want to do, especially with an Indigo Next that has a uh, digital display where if you went into your real-time data menu, you can see what part of the sequence of operation you're in. Uh, you want to verify, are you actually in harvest? But there are two ways to check this. You can do it at the valve. Uh, it gets tight, but I'm on, those are my hands there. Uh, leads coming onto the exposed metal part of the solenoid for the valve. Should have line voltage across that valve during my harvest sequence. You could also do it at the board. Here I'm highlighting a cool air board. I'm going across wire 61 with my red lead and wire 56 with my uh, black lead. That's gonna be uh, L1, 61 and neutral uh, 56. It's gonna be the same wire numbers on an Indigo Next or an Indigo. Um, the, the board layout is the same even though they're different boards. All right. What about uh, the harvest valve analysis specifically? We verified we got power. Okay, power's there, we're good. Um, but there are two types of harvest. We've got hot gas where the compressor's inside and we're using that uh, heat to go past the expansion valve into the evaporator. We're using sensible heat. And then there's cool vapor defrost. Uh, we're gonna use a scenario with a machine that I have here on the screen. It's an IYT0900A-261 with a 80 degree ambient in the room and the condenser uh, is got good clearances and it's been cleaned. So we know everything should be right. Here you're gonna see the, uh, you're gonna see the pressure chart that we're looking at. And here's where my harvest should be. Uh, you'll see this uh, where your harvest pressures are gonna be. We're gonna focus on the 80 degrees. Uh, so my head pressure should be somewhere between 150 and 190. Uh, my suction should be between 100 and 125 PSI during my harvest sequence. All right, so we're in harvest, got the pressure chart back on this screen, and we got some gauges going on. So we're going to see what happens when we're in this harvest. All right, what's going on? My head pressure there is at 289 PSI while I'm in this harvest sequence, and so my suction only got up to 71. All right, so I've got high head and I've got low suction pressure during my harvest. That's going to tell me that the harvest valve is not feeding at the rate that it's supposed to. Remember, you've already verified if you have voltage. So we know that the board called for the valve and that valve didn't listen to us. It's not opening all the way. You're going to need to cut out that valve and that dryer, replace them, and then recharge the system to its nameplate weight. Uh, that's one of the big keys. Keep in mind for harvest valves, regardless of condensing option, show this again. If this was a quiet cube ice machine and it was a single harvest valve and those were my pressures, same theory. Doesn't matter that the type of heat is different, that we're going sensible versus latent or latent versus sensible. If you have high head pressure 
and low suction during your harvest. Your harvest valve is not feeding, your harvest valve needs to be replaced. But we're gonna show you a little bit on the traditional remote. So this unit, it's gonna be an IYF, so it's a 404 system, 0600N, meaning we've got a traditional remote. So the condenser and the fan are outside of the ice machine. Compressor still inside. We're gonna have that same 80 degree ambient, good clearances around that condenser and the condenser's uh, clean. Here we've got a pressure chart again, and we're gonna show you the, your harvest pressures. Notice that they're a little bit different on this machine. It's 130 to 200 PSI on the high side, 75 to 100 PSI on the low side uh, in an 80 degree ambient. Here, I just wanna show you the flow path here and how it's a little bit different from a self-contained option. This HPR, its purpose is to recharge the hot gas loop. So we're feeding from the receiver through a solenoid into a mechanical valve that's feeding this into the compressor. But again, we're gonna do the same bit here. Remember on a harvest valve, we said high head, low suction, you're gonna have a hot gas valve problem. Well, let's see what we have on this IYF 0600N today. Now remember, when you're doing any of these uh, analysis, uh, you had to have a normal free cycle. Well, if your free cycle was normal, you made a full sheet of ice within the published times. Uh, well, look at this. We've got low head pressure and low suction during the harvest. Well, it'd make you think you might have had a low charge, but freeze was normal. We can't have a low charge here. But remember what I just said on the previous slide that we're using that HPR system to recharge the harvest loop. Low head pressure and low suction pressure on a traditional remote ice machine. Utilizing the HPR system means that that HPR, harvest pressure regulating valve, is defective. You're gonna to need to replace that solenoid, the mechanical valve, and the dryer. Get new ones in there, recharge that system to the nameplate weight, and you'll be back to having normal pressures between that 130 and 200 on your discharge side and 75 to 100 on your suction side. This is a valve that's not feeding we need it there. It's not the hot gas valve, it's the harvest pressure regulating valve and the harvest pressure regulating solenoid valve. All right, what about symptom four? Symptom four, uh, remember guys, free cycle is normal. That's key, just like it was in symptom three. And the cubes are melted after harvest. This means we're having melt out. Here, uh, there's not a different way to troubleshoot symptom four, regardless of condensing options. So I'm only gonna show you one chart here. And it's similar to our other ones, it's asking you to follow what's going on here. Uh, one of the big ones you gotta keep in mind when you look at our evaporators, uh, those horizontal partitions are slanted downward um, at an angle to assist with harvest. So one of the first things it's gonna ask you is, is the ice machine level? If it's not, fix that. You're taking away the advantage of those being slanted downwards uh, to let gravity take effect, level the machine. Then we move into things about uh, water flowing over the evaporator and dump valve analysis. So, uh, so I'm gonna stay there. We're gonna, we're gonna get real into uh, dump valve analysis here in a bit, but I'm also gonna show you two things that can happen with a symptom four. It's not always gonna be safety two. So what we're looking for, two outcomes that could happen when you ha have identified a, uh, a symptom four is going on. If the curtain or the dampers on machines that have a damper or multiple dampers uh, do not open and close within 30 seconds within the maximum harvest time, E2 for an Indigo Next or a safety limit two will, uh, will happen on a cool air. That means that that curtain or damper stayed closed the whole harvest. See, we were closed before, we're still closed at 6.59, we got one second to drop that ice. But this one we get all the time on the tech support lines. People saying my machine is shutting off on full bin. It is a false full bin. Well, the key there is what are we looking for for full bin? Remember we defined harvest earlier. Said I'm looking for the curtain to close, open and close within 30 seconds. Well, if the curtain or the damper start to open and they stay open for 30 seconds in harvest, that machine's gonna shut off on a full bin. So we're gonna show you here, we're back to 100, uh, one minute and 24 seconds, that curtain's closed in harvest. We're at 128, that curtain has come open. Now, I've told you maximum harvest is seven minutes on current software and three and a half minutes on previous software. That's if the curtain is staying closed. This curtain's open. You now have 30 seconds to drop that ice. If this uh, picture here was counting up, at 158, if that ice has not dropped and that curtain has not come closed, you're gonna go to bin full. 
we're showing you what the curtain is and this is what you'd see on your screen. Um, the big key with this one is, let's say that you drop right as you hit that 158 mark, drops down, slam shut. Now it's closed, well you think, hey, curtain's closed. Remember what full bin is as well. Uh, there's a delay in there. We're looking for two things. The curtain needs to be closed, it is, and we have to have gone through the delay. I'm gonna show you what you'd see on a cool air. So here's the cool air uh, control board. We're in harvest right now. See on the left side there that the compressor and the harvest valve are going. Uh, we got the harvest light on in the middle there and we got the bin switch light lit, telling me that my bin switch uh, is made and my curtain is closed. Well now, same thing's going on, but the bin switch light went out. You still have the same 30 seconds. That's all you've got left to try to get this ice uh, off of the plate and the curtain or the damper to come closed. Um, if it doesn't happen, you're gonna go off on full bin. Full bin delay on a Indigo Next is gonna be five minutes and on a Cool Air is gonna be three minutes. Now we're gonna talk about that dump valve though. Uh, so we go further in here. So a number of things could have happened. Remember, symptom four is meltout. Maybe your freeze wasn't right, but you verified that. Freeze is right. Well, one of the things we're going to ask you about is, is water flowing over the evaporator during the first 45 seconds of the harvest cycle? The reason we ask you that question is because during the first 45 seconds of harvest, we're sending hot gas to the evaporator or cool vapor in the, uh, in the case of the uh, quiet cube ice machines but we're also running the pump and the dump valve. We're trying to get the old water out uh, so we can start with a new fresh batch. If that machine cannot drain old water out, there's a good chance your machine's gonna get dirty a lot faster. So uh, we're gonna see, hey, do we have voltage to it? Two ways to check that, just like we did with the hot gas valve. You can do it at the valve. There's that dump valve. I'm going into that harness and we're in harvest. Hey, do I have, uh, do I have line voltage across it? Yes, I do. I'm in harvest. I've got my voltage. That valve is getting power. That valve should be getting the water out of there in conjunction with the water pump. You can also do it at the board. You can check at these two pins. It'd be wire 56, which is gonna be at that upper left-hand corner, just like it was on the previous one, and wire 60. It's gonna be on that bottom middle uh, terminal there. Um, 60 and 56. Uh, will tell me if I'm getting voltage from the board. This is a cool air uh, board. It would be the same two wires on an Indigo Next board, 56 and 60. Now, we talked about the uh, the dump valve um, not draining out, which would lead to a dirty evaporator. But what if the evaporator is not dirty? Hey, if it is dirty, clean that thing up. There's nothing uh, worse for harvest than a dirty plate. It stops uh, the ability for this to come and slide off smoothly because it's trying to move its way past scale. But, all right, you cleaned it yourself. It's as shiny as a nickel in your pocket. What if that evaporator is damaged? Well, here on the left, you'll see that somebody uh, was trying to get ice off themselves. They bent that partition uh, about five rows down, and you can see ding marks on a couple of the... Uh, of the partitions itself. Someone must have been banging ice off with a tool, uh, you know, some sort of screwdriver, or anything else to get there. And then on the right, looks like I might be losing some nickel on that plate. Well, let me tell you, we coat these evaporators in nickel because it helps with the harvest. That nickel is almost as smooth as the ice itself. So if it's clean, if the ice is heavy enough to fall, we just slide smoothly across it and then gravity takes effect and it drops. And then we go back from harvest into another pre-chill and we keep making ice until the bin is full and the curtain stays open. Well, here's two instances of damaged evaporators. There's no repairing these evaporators. The plate cannot be repaired. It cannot be replated in the field. At this point, you'd be looking at uh, replacing this uh, evaporator in, the, in these two ice machines. Once you've done that, you'll be able to start harvesting again because damaged plates, uh, they don't harvest. So, wanna talk about some upcoming uh, monthly spotlights. Uh, in August, we're gonna talk about flake and nugget uh, Ice machine diagnostics, so we'll talk about machines not running, machines uh, having issues. I'll just give you a lot of the troubleshooting on that. We haven't really highlighted Flake and Nugget in a while. Uh, September 2023, we're going to talk about luminized installation and troubleshooting. Uh, we're going to try to highlight uh, installing it into an Indigo Next, uh, try to get into maybe some Neo in there, and uh, maybe even Cool Air. 
uh, in October. We're going to give you a, a real big introduction to Ice Tech Facts, show you everything that's out there, where to find it, how to find it, how to like it, how to subscribe, and how to get notifications about what's out there for those, hey, I just need to see X real fast. I don't need the whole sequence of operations. November, we're going to go over the Neo refrigeration system and how to diagnose those things. So we'll talk about things with the freeze sequence uh, and we'll probably highlight the hot gas valve like we did today. Remember, hot gas valve, high head pressure, low suction and harvest, that's a restricted valve. And then in December, we're going to go over Indigo Next cleaning procedure. So we're going to go and walk through, hey, ripping that machine apart again. Uh, people ask for it all the time, so we're going to try to get it real deep in there, how to clean that whole machine. We'll show you the uh, removal of the bin, cleaning out the bin. That's what we're looking for. Again, we want uh, feedback on any future content. Uh, only so many ideas. Maybe the ideas on the last uh, screen there aren't what you want to see. Well, if you take a snap of this uh, QR code and we'll probably put that uh, URL there in the comment section for or the description for the YouTube channel, uh, go to that form. Tell us what you're looking to see. Hey, you know what? I want more about diagnosing a water inlet valve. I want more about X, Y and Z. Let us know uh, we if it's something that we think there's a lot of need for out there that, hey, we missed it. Uh, we'll get it out there. We'll create it as soon as we can, as well as we can. and I'd like to try to give whoever's idea it is a shout out. I'm going to leave that up there for a couple of seconds before we uh, go into our next slide. All right, so again, uh, we talked about how there's going to be a quiz for uh, this for the machine um, for the spotlight instead of the webcast. We're doing the same thing. I also want to highlight here at the bottom the bigger picture. Uh, Level three factory school training is starting up again soon. Uh, October will be here before you guys know it. So uh, reach out to us on manswalkice.com or uh, if you click on service and you click on training and then you'll see there in black you've got highlighted level three factory training it's going to have our schedule and if you scroll down you'll see there is a link to our registration form you can fill that out and email it to the email that's on that page or if you have any questions uh, you can call Aaron or I and we'll be able to uh, tell you what's going on with the factory school uh, answer any questions that the registration form might not uh, we've only announced what we're doing for fall slash winter of 23 uh, the 2024 schedule will be uh, coming up here soon we got to lock down some dates Again, in order to receive a copy of the presentation and a certificate for uh, the monthly uh, spotlight, uh, you're going to need to take the quiz and uh, submit the quiz to us with the information that it's asking for, uh, specifically that email address, because I need a way to get in touch with you so I can say, hey, you know, you took this great job. Here's a certificate and get you uh, pulled in for the drawings that we do, which here we're going to show you. Uh, again, we gotta get that. Uh, we gotta get that to us uh, within the first month now. So uh, this is we're gonna have to get this uh, updated on us uh, within the first month of the original uh, airing. Uh, what will the original posting of the monthly spotlight? We will draw two names for every 25 submissions. So if we get 100 submissions uh, within a month, a little different than it was on the webcast. The webcast was hey within the first two hours. Now we're going to say within the first month. And here we got uh, the link. Uh, we'll drop that into uh, either a comment or a uh, description, but there's also the QR code that'll get you to the July monthly spotlight quiz. Feel free to snap that on any sort of mobile device for you. The quiz is mobile friendly, just like it used to be on the webcasts. So uh, we'll leave this up for a little bit. Again, my name is Jason MacDonald. I'm a technical service trainer here at Manitowoc Ice. Hope you enjoy the new format and our monthly uh, spotlights. Please uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Please uh, utilize that QR code for uh, future content so we can highlight some stuff in depth that you're looking for. Uh, we'll use that with our Tech Back series as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time.